Hello and welcome to another edition of Talking to a Biologist. Today we're at the Winnipeg Zoo talking with Dr. Jane Waterman from the Department of Biological Sciences. Uh, welcome Jane. Thank you for coming out here and being with me. All right, uh, so Dr. Waterman is relatively new here at the University of Manitoba and that's a tractor. Dr. Waterman is relatively new at the University of Manitoba. Uh, can you tell us about uh, uh, what other universities you worked at before you came here to the University of Manitoba? Well, before this, I was at the University of Central Florida. It was nice and warm there. And before that, I was in Idaho at a small college. And then before that, I was at York University in Toronto. And then before that, the University of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon. So, and then even before that, I was at the University of Minnesota where I did my doctorate, but I'm Canadian and I did my undergrad and my grad in Canadian schools. So what is it that specifically brings you here to the zoo today? Well, we're right near the end of the breeding season, so we're trying to get those last few males and get their samples. So we're going around with live traps. We put a trap down with a bit of peanut butter and they love peanut butter and the squirrels come and get into the trap and then we can actually process them. Now, how would you find out which is the more macho squirrel? What, what sort of actual work are you doing here in terms of uh, what are you looking at? Well, we're looking at the body condition of males, which we can get by weighing them and taking uh, measurements of their morphology, the, the width of their skull, the length of their spine, and try to come up with, you know, how really good condition are they in. And then we are looking at their sperm, so we actually can remove sperm from males and see what its condition is, how long is it, how big is it, uh, which is just as much a phenotype of the male as, as looking at his outside body. And then we're looking at blood smears to look at his white blood cells to see if he's actually uh, mounting an immune response, um, as well as, as in some of the individuals, we actually look at their spleen size. And, and is this the sort of work you've done at all those other universities, or have you, uh, uh, was it anything early on in your career that uh, really made you want to look at uh, uh, become a biologist? What drove you to become a biologist? Well, I'm an animal behaviorist, and I look at animal behavior. And I, look, I love looking at reproduction because really you're looking at, at natural selection right in the face. I mean, what is natural selection? It's getting your genes to the next generation. And when you're looking at reproduction in animals and you're seeing the, the decisions that they make and, and what influences their success or not success, I mean, that's, that's raw natural selection right there. And of course, Biology 1020 students, uh, natural selection is a key part of this course, so you're going to want to pay attention. All right. Um, what other sort of work do you hope to get into now that you're here at the University of Manitoba besides the Richardson ground squirrels? Well, I'll be doing more of the polar bear work that I've been involved in for the last 16 years. So the, we will be continuing to analyze data that we currently have. And uh, we're, we're actually using technology to study the bears by uh, a new website that we're, we're getting going this fall that allows tourists to upload photographs of the bears. And then we can use a computer program to identify them and see if they're in our database and follow them through time and space. Oh wow, that's uh, that's that's very very cool. So uh, if you were going to give some advice to a biology uh, first year biology student here at the U of M about who's maybe interested in a biological field or a life science field, what would be the one great piece of advice you could give to a first year biology student who's really interested in science? What should they do with their summers? What should they do? Go out and get experience. Don't just work at McDonald's because you can make a lot of money. Even if it means that you just volunteer part-time in a lab or, or do directed studies, but go and get as much experience as you can so you can find your passion and you can walk out of here not only with your coursework but with a lot of, of, of actual experience. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Waterman, and uh, thank you very much, uh, biology students. We'll now be returning to your regular scheduled Biology 1020 lecture. Thank you.